If you are learning English, then of course you want to learn the English that will be the most useful, that will allow you to communicate with as many people as possible. So, a type of English called standard English seems very attractive, especially when you are told that this is the type of English that is used at schools. In dictionaries, by newsreaders, and even the smart assistant on your telephone. But what exactly is standard English, and how can you use it to communicate successfully with anyone in English? To answer this question, we need to go back in time about five hundred years. This was a time of great revolution in the English language, especially written English. Before this time, books were only created and read by academics and scholars, and they were rare and expensive. But with advances in technology, books became cheaper and easier to make, and as more people were being educated. More people could read, so books started to become available to the general public for the first time, and this revealed some problems. Firstly, there were no good reference materials for readers to find the meanings of unknown words. Secondly, English spelling was not fixed. The word neighbor had various spellings, and attitudes towards spelling were much more relaxed. So books would even mix different spellings in the same sentence. And finally, there was a lot of regional variation in the usage of vocabulary and grammar. To try and fix these problems, in 1746, a group of the most successful booksellers in London hired Samuel Johnson to make an English dictionary. The idea was that this dictionary would create a standard for the English language. When his dictionary was published in 1755, it had more than 42,000 entries and contained key decisions about word spellings, meanings, and usage. Its impact on the English language was enormous, and it remains today. One of the most remarkable scholarly achievements in history. By a single man. Let me repeat that: by a single man. Now let's talk about another man, Lord Reef. He was responsible for the creation and direction of the BBC, the oldest and largest broadcaster in the world. He described himself as a benevolent dictator. One of the key decisions he made was the accent that would be used by the BBC. Here he is explaining the reasons behind his decision. What I tried to get was a style or quality of English which would not be laughed at in any part of the country. But the interesting point. In terms of social history, is that this particular accent, which the BBC produced, somehow identified the BBC with a certain section of society, certain social trends, so that to this day, the BBC is thought of as the organ of the, as it were, genteel and respectable elements. In society, anything wrong with that?、Um, well, except that after all, the people who speak in this standard way are, in fact, a minority. As the power and influence of the BBC grew, 
so did the power and influence of the accent he chose. It's fair to say that he single-handedly influenced the sound of English for generations. Again, the decision of a single man. But they are not the first and they will not be the last examples. People are told not to end their sentences with prepositions by this guy in 1672. Scottish and Irish people are told that their accent is offensive and disgusting by this guy in 1803. People are told never to use the passive voice by this guy in 1959. And EU politicians are told to stop using words that don't exist by this guy in 2016. I hope you're seeing a pattern here. The single man. But over time, their influence has created something which is packaged and sold as standard English. The word standard suggests that there is one type of English that is accepted and used by the majority of people. That is total Standard English is nothing more than a collection of opinions and prejudices of powerful people. Samuel Johnson's dictionary didn't contain the words unique or champagne because he personally didn't like French words. Great standard. <laughs> that accent that Lord Reith chose for the BBC and that is used in the dictionary is what is called a social accent, which means that it doesn't specify where you are from, but instead that you have money, power, and influence. And as a result, it's estimated to be spoken by less than 3% of people in the UK. It's the furthest possible thing from standard. Now, let me answer some questions that I know you have. Is there a standard English accent that everyone can understand? No. Is there a standard English grammar? Also, no. But what about standard vocabulary? Again, no. But you don't have to take my word for it. Many linguists have dedicated their entire lives to documenting and researching language variation. And the evidence is clear. But what does this mean for you as a learner? What English should you learn? Aren't you lost without a standard? The reality is that standard English is different for each person. And now that English is a true global language, that is even more true. If you're a doctor, your standard English might contain things like interictal pseudo-dementia. But if you're a cycling fan, it might contain things like broom wagon. And your accent will always reflect your identity. We often think that language comes from places of authority, like teachers and grammar books and dictionaries, and then we learn it. But it's the exact opposite. Language comes from us, from our human experiences, and then authority tries to control it. But your language ability can never be judged or measured by comparing it with an invented standard. The only true measure of language ability is successful communication. Language gives you the permission to be truly authentic 
to express yourself using the words and sounds that represent your life experiences. Don't let the opinions and prejudices of others stop you from participating in the democracy of language. I'm Christian. This is Kangaroo English, and I'll see you in class.